Hopefully you're ready to uh, get down and dirty. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, so with that being said, a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. And uh, first we're going to talk about the NFL. The what NFL. Happened, hap what happened there? What happened? I don't know. I, I didn't got see screwed. it. Hail Mary play, of course, like it was, they were fighting for the ball and then like it was caught for a, um, it originally was ruled a touchdown. You know, but, but it, was it was an interception. Clearly yeah. an interception. Clearly it was so an interception. Who do you blame that on? I blame it on the replacement officials. I blame it on Commissioner Roger Goodell. Because if you look at what he's done, ever since the referee strike, they, they haven't had any significant dialogue. And if you look at it with the NFL, that this is not going to get any time better anytime soon. How's it Goodell's fault? It is, because he's the one that's negotiating with it. What about so, the? So he needs to close the deal. Is that what you're saying? Basically. Mm -hmm. so, so, wait a minute. So something bad happened to the Packers? I don't see a problem. That's <laughs> you know, I don't either. Go <laughs> Bears. <laughs> Go well, Bears. You're a Bears what? guy. <laughs> you're a Bears guy. Then you know, uh, my fantasy team's full of Packers. And also, if you look at the, you know, it doesn't really impact the Lions very much. If you look at, you know, the Lions are actually tied with the Packers as far as being at one and two for last place in the division. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, yeah. All right, so let's let's kind of talk about this uh, this whole strike thing or whatever with the refs. Um, they want money. It's they, all about money. They want money. They want pensions. They want pensions. They want job security. Yada yada yada. Where do you do you guys think uh, who, after last night's events, do the refs now collectively have the the bargaining power, or is it still in the NFL's hand? They definitely have the upper hand right now. I think, especially after last night live, you know in front of everybody of America, Monday Night Football. Yep. Absolutely have the upper hand right now at this point. You know what this reminds me a lot of is the uh, the James Joy or the Jim Joyce blown Lando call. Galarraga, game. Right, right. Uh, right. Just, right. Just, I think it became a huge national story. Well, I, I, honestly, Jim Joyce is a, you know, he knows what he's doing out there, whereas these replacement reps, these are Division three reps. That's true. That's these true. Are I was just Division two, magnitude. Division three reps, and yeah. you're looking at, you know, them having to go into an NFL game, that's a little unrealistic. Cut from the lingerie bowl. All Supposedly. Goodell cares about is ratings. <laughs> well, the, the point I would make is, do you mean in regular games, they're not talking about NFL with referee problems? Every single week That's there were true. problems with the regular referees. So now every single time a mistake's made, it's on the front page, it's on Sports Center, it's on this and that. Well, these mistakes were here before. That's very true. Well, these problems here with the, um, well, you know, this is a huge significance because this costs Green Bay a football game, you know? Yes. There is, you know what Green saying? Bay would be sitting at 2-1 and one if it wasn't for... Bad call. Here's my point to the Packer fan, okay, Packer Nation. You're one and two right now, walking into week four. Green Bay Packers just need to fight oh. Forget it and drive on. Mm -hmm. Coach they got Gray, the Saints baby. this week. They got, got the, the Saints. Saints this week. Yeah, well Your favorite team, Ian. Second Owen. favorite. No, they're your favorite. Owen, um I believe they're uh, Owen three, I believe. I bleed Honolulu blue before anything else. You bleed Honolulu well, blue. That's right. Jay bleeds. Jay bleeds. Yeah. Chicago so here's, here's the thing with Green Bay. If you don't want to be in a situation where that happens, then don't leave it up to a last-minute play. Put them away early. Get it done with. You can't tell me on paper that's not a way better team. What, Seattle had, what, a rookie quarterback? Yeah, Russell Wilson. The I third, don't think the their defense would be that impressive. Third-round yeah. pick. Russell yeah. Wilson, I mean, like, if you look at what he's done, I mean, like, here's a quarterback that came – from Wisconsin, from North Carolina State, and then he went to Wisconsin for one year. And then you got to look at what he's done. He's What's been successful. <laughs> he's been successful, you know what I mean? And he won the starting job over Matt Flynn. I thought Matt Flynn was going to be the starting quarterback over at Seattle. They paid him like he was. They yeah. paid him a lot, you know what I mean? And now they're paying him a lot to be a backup quarterback. Man. Yes, yes. Um, that, that's, an, that's a good point, though. The Packers, what, Rodgers was sacked eight times in the first Eight half. times. I mean, I didn't think Seattle's defense would be as good as it was. Yes. Um, I didn't. So that's a good point, you know, not leaving it up to the refs to, to blow that call. And it um, was, and that's what happened. The Packers, in a sense, got no one to blame but themselves. Kind of, but looking to the future, is this going to speed up the process of getting the real refs back, or, or is this, is this going to be the defining moment? Well, I, I think the NFL made another mistake today because they went back and reviewed it, and mm -hmm. didn't, they didn't over, over, 
turn the call. The NFL right. is so powerful enough, I don't think they ever have to blame themselves. You know what I mean? They better blame themselves here because if you look well, at they're it, not. Well, they're not. The thing is is that they, they, said they felt that Green Bay should have won the game, but they're not reversing the call. They're not reversing the score. Actually, they said the only missed call on that was no pass interference on Golden Tate. How is that not pass interference? Are you kidding me? Right. How is that not offense pass interference? They Are didn't say anything about the inter interception. interception. What did he do, you do, know? Sammy? I didn't see it. You saw it? Did you watch the game? Uh, no. no. I oh. saw the I mean, I saw the end play, but I didn't see Golden Tate. He... Uh, well, he did do a little bit of jersey. Well, yeah, jersey pulling on the uh, it's more of a Jennings. Yeah, pushing shoving off. Back. Shoving the back. Yeah, yeah it's not off his passing frames. You're kidding me. Right. So, do we see the when, – uh, when's, the, when's the deadline? The fifth the fifth week or something they say we could week see the six. refs back? Week six. Week six. Do we think we see it before them I that know, week, I after? Guess, I guess what I look at is they keep saying that it's a, it's a safety issue. We need to stop headshots because it's a safety issue. We need to stop – change the kickoff rules because it's a safety issue. Isn't the refereeing a safety issue too? Having guys I in there. Say, I yeah. don't know if anybody watched the Sunday night game, but it got real chippy in a hurry. It oh, did. A lot of plays yeah. were missed, England, yes. and a lot of guys in the, in the refs didn't take control. No. Now, normally, a regular staff would take control of that, get it calmed down, and, and that kind of stuff would stop. But instead, yep. they didn't do that, and it just kept escalating. I was waiting for somebody to get thrown mm -hmm. out of that game. We're definitely seeing how hesitant the refs are on mundane calls. I would say calls, we're penalties. seeing a change in sports in general. You look at the NHLs and a lockout. The NBA yes. just got out of a lockout. So the NFL. The NFL, you know, obviously just got out of a lockout, and they got the replacement reps. Right. What culture are we teaching our young kids in sports? We'll have to address that next segment. Got to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to talk Lake sports. Orion Dragons football. Get it right, Goodell. We'll be right back. Prescription drug abuse is a national epidemic. The new in way to obtain drugs is through parents' or grandparents' medicine chests. Removing prescriptions from your cabinet is the best way to keep drugs out of the hands of our young people. We've got to work together to protect our teens, our seniors, and our environment. Clean out your medicine cabinet today. Please participate in Operation Medicine Cabinet and drop off your unwanted or expired prescriptions at one of our law enforcement drop-off sites in Oakland County. We can't ignore this situation anymore. We own a habitat home. I love working on my habitat home. Soy dueño de una casa de habitat. My neighbor is a habitat homeowner. Being a habitat homeowner has changed our lives. My mortgage payment for habitat is less than what I paid for rent. Habitat for Humanity of Oakland County currently has homes available with mortgage payments lower than most rent payments. If you or someone you know needs decent and affordable housing, call 248-338-1843 or visit our website at habitatoakland.org. Welcome back to Between Terminas. Guys, you know, it's great to have some guests here, you know, mm -hmm. get some uh, different opinions. These guys, uh, they, of course, they can be got, real potato. We had Pat Caputo here. We had uh, yeah, he, oh, we have James oh, Barnett oh, here, oh, you know. Boy. Yeah. To have you guys here, it's just, it's awesome. You, you guys had Pat Caputo in here? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> we did have him in here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll invite you next well, time he comes on. Episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'll be back soon. All right, let's uh, move on from him. All right, so Lake Orion Dragons. Ah, they, they lost a nail-biter, huh? They didn't lose a nail biter. They won no? last week. What was the score? It was 38 close. 38 zip. 38 well, nothing? 38 nothing. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. Where, where what you what conference are they playing in here? The, uh, English. Uh, <laughs> playing the OA Red. You know what I mean? The OA Red right now <laughs> is basically, it's not a good conference right now because you got to look at it here. You got Lake Orion and Clarkson. You got, like, in the middle, you got Rochester, Troy. Stony Pine. Creek are all battling for that, for that last spot. And Little then, of spot. course, you got Pontiac. West Bloomfield and Troy Atkins are like the bottom feeders right now. So is there anyone that can challenge Lake Orion? Or no. Is it, no. Right no. Now, right now it'll be Clarkson. Right now it's um, the way the schedule's looking. Clarkson had a close game with Stony Creek. Okay. Didn't they almost get beat by Stony Creek? Yeah, yeah they almost got beat. Mm -hmm. What about Adams? How's Adams look? Ooh. Adams is in the white. Adams. We'll discuss Adams, white. Adams we'll later. We'll discuss Adams oh. later. But anyways, you look at... Cake eaters. <laughs> yeah. You look at how... Here's my point about the red and the white. Yes. You look at the you look at the record that's going on the the red and the white. I mean, I got to give credit where credit's due. Lake Orion is really preparing for these teams very well, and they're playing very, very playing great football right now. You know, obviously the competition, obviously is a little bit, you know, obviously you can't control what's given in the schedule. Sure. You have you play the schedule. I mean, you if, I mean if Lake if if you want, and that's the question that we that. 
you know, a good friend of ours, Kyle Krauth, asked, Lake Orion should be playing Who's a Kyle tougher Krauth? schedule. You know who he is. No. Lake Orion should be playing a tougher schedule. Uh, how do they do that? They're playing everyone in their Probably division. Probably OA. The OA needs to address it next year. Either well, how do you how do you uh, propose they do that? Right now, the league is set on enrollment, based okay. upon en enrollment, and you look. I I would say the OA should look into going into either north south divisions, or base it upon back in the old days when we when you know back in the old days when it was based upon past success. Okay. And so what it, it went on records? Mm -hmm. from the based on I records, would first yes. to go okay. on a four four. It's like a four division six team format because that's what they do in track. Mm -hmm. um, basically, baseball. geographic. You know what I mean? I threw it in baseball. I think that would make a lot of sense. How would that address the competition issue, though? It would also address it based on geographic. You geographic. know what I mean? I mean well, right. Geographic, Oxford yeah. should not be playing. You know, Oxford should Oxford should be playing Lake Orion and Clarkston and Adams on a consistent basis. Why don't they? Is it because they're in the, the white? schedule? Because of the schedule, how they set the schedule up. Well, they're in there because of enrollment right now. Right. Right, so. right. the league's based on enrollment right But now. this year, so far, they're the only team that's really given Lake Orion a competition. Right now, correct? Oxford. And, Oxford. you know, I'm not saying that Troy, you know, or Troy's, you know, a bad team because they're not. And Stony Creek's not a bad team either. It's just Lake Orion, you got to give them credit too. Lake Orion's been dominating these opponents these last few games. So, do we start talking about postseason play here yet, or is it too soon? Well, we pretty confident that they're going to make the playoffs. Pretty well, confident. Well, right. I'm but talking six about the magic su number. success mm -hmm. in the playoffs. Six is the magic number, yeah. yes. Well, I've been looking at the latest news to me. Um, of course, he's very accurate with his playoff projections. <laughs> and nope. I, it's news to me. To, it's on a site called sure. news to you. Right now. <laughs> Can you but, say that again? No. Uh, one more time. Uh, one more time. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. But I've been looking at. I've been looking. Hopefully at, the mics uh, didn't blow there. I've okay. been looking at the projection. Like Lake Orion could be seen Eisenhower in the playoffs. That is a matchup that's not very. That, that matchup just terrifies me because. Why is it? Eisenhower's got a big line. They got a big line. They got a. Their defense is okay, but you know they got a senior lane team. They're big on the line. You know, so it'd be very interesting. I saw them at Ford Field and they looked. Big. They look Eisenhower's really pretty big. big. Eisenhower's pretty big. So we definitely be seeing some cloudy, cloudy, cloudy clear. We could, we <laughs> could, we could see him in so the playoffs, but otherwise, I might, I'm thinking maybe we and West might be the best case scenario for this team. I think what Curtis is trying to say is the projections are cloudy, cloudy right now. Yeah. Right now, yeah, but it's going to clear. It's going to go clear off as, as, yeah. as the weeks go on. It'll yeah. clear as the weeks go on. Okay. Guys, I got a question to ask. Obviously, let's preview this week. With, you know, obviously, freshmen and JV and varsity all play Rochester this week. What do you guys think about? What's going to happen? Obviously, it's homecoming weekend. Right. What do you guys think about that? I'm going to predict a sweep. Yeah, I, sweep. I know at our level, freshman level, they're saying this is the best team that we've we've, we've played so far. Um, but I think we've had a good couple of weeks of practice here, mm -hmm. and we're getting things together. We'll be I, we'll get to go. I expect the fresh. I, I think freshman's going to. I think this week freshman's going to going to obliterate Rochester. I think JV is going to be very interesting. Bounce back. Bounce back. I'm hoping in the varsity. I think it's going to be another obliteration. I, th I think on, on uh, with our game, our mentality is going to be war. We are relentless. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take that mentality into I Thursday agree. night. One thing that I noticed with Rochester, I checked their rosters from all three, freshman, JV, and varsity. They're not very <coughs> deep. No. One no. thing well, That's the one thing I noticed about Rochester. They're not very deep on all three sides, freshman, JV, and varsity. So I'm wondering if Lake Orion will take advantage of that based upon the depth or the lack of depth Rochester has. So, right? Anthony, let me ask you a sweep this week. For yes. Dragon football? Yes. All right. I'm saying this week. I'm well, okay. I think the depth is going to be a huge play in this game because, like, if you look at what Rochester has, you know what I mean? They got two guys that can virtually beat you. But, varsity. But, but if you look at what Lake Orion has, playmakers. Their speed, it's going to be too much for Rochester. Their speed, playmakers, they got execution. I think it's going to be too much for Rochester in the overall. I think Lake Orion's going to win this 48 to nothing. Big prediction there, big boy. Big prediction. Wow. Yeah. Well, judging by how this year has gone, it's not too far fetched, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lake Orange had tremendous success <clears throat> against Rochester over the years. Yes, yes. All right, real quick before we go to the next break, uh, even though you just come off of a complete annihilation of Troy, any concerns for Lake Orange moving forward? Stay healthy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Stay healthy. Get ready for the. Um, Got week seven, got another Pontiac, and then of course the next in the two weeks are gonna really tell us about what Lake Orion's about. Okay. Well, final words on the matchup? 
it's final words be, on LL it's football? Gonna ugly. It's going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly Friday. I'm with you. Ugly Friday. I don't know about 48 points, so I'll go 35. <laughs> 35-7. I think you're talking about Friday. I think Thursday is going to be nice, too. Thursday I can't wait. Nice. Yes, it will be. I homecoming this week, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Homecoming. I wonder how I that is. Any I early uh, polling returns? Who's going to win the homecoming king? No. I think no. it's Sammy. Who cares? Sammy's coming Sammy's back. Sammy's coming back. Who My cares? money's on you. Uh, well, yeah. been there, done that. You've been there, done that. All right. Well, uh, we come back. I don't know what we're going to talk about. Something. It's going to get a little wild, I think. That's my prediction. Stay right there between Terminas after the break. Like Warren Township presents Barn Days on Saturday, September 8th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Gather up the family and bring them down to Friendship Park to enjoy games, a petting farm, pony rides, food, and fun. Pick up some farm fresh produce at the farmer's market or take part in the Chamber Chili Challenge. Hop on board a hayride. But keep your head low because you just might encounter some Yankees and Rebels who don't realize the Civil War is over. Mark it down on your calendar, Barn Day, Saturday, September 8th, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Friendship Park. Cost is only $5 per car. For more information, contact Orion Township Community Programs by calling 248 3910304, extension 305 or visit www.orientownship.org. Welcome back to Between Terminas. And, uh, you know, it was a big sports week, but I think um, a big call-out session is in, is in need. Yeah. So uh, you want to kick off the yeah, festivities? I'll kick off. I'll kick off. You know, this, you know, they obviously Lake Orion freshman JV go to Rochester this week for football. Last time we went to Rochester for basketball, just, you know, terrible. Just terrible. You look at the, the Rochester timekeepers. Rochester clock keepers, timekeepers, why? Simple. You guys screwed around a great man during the game. You, number one, you screwed around a great man. You guys were just, you kept running the clock. You made my coach get a technical. What the heck are you thinking? What were you thinking? Don't mess with my man here. Thank you, Anthony. Simple as that. You messed around with a great group of players. You messed around. You may, even worse, you made me yell, and I almost, hit, I almost got thrown out of the game. Had it not been for Sammy and Kyle Wood holding me down and making sure I don't get thrown out, I'd probably get thrown out of the game. Rochester clock keepers, get your act together Thursday. You know, I will be there. Sammy will be there. I'm going to make sure everything's right. <laughs> Sheriff's in town, My huh? second call out, wow. Lake wow. Orion JV. Obviously you, guys lost two call obviously, you guys lost two games. Obviously, you had the lead, and then, you and then obviously, something happened in the second half. You guys, I love you guys to death. I care about you guys. I want you guys to do well. Bounce back this week against Rochester. I think it's going to happen. I know you guys can do it. Come on, Lake Orion. Let's get it done. All right. Huh, you're next, buddy. Is it my call? I think you yeah, have some words next. to say, yeah. Well, mine's going to be a little bit tamer than that, I think. But my, uh, my call out is to somebody I saw after the game Friday night. Was everybody here at the round table at the game Friday night? Uh, uh, I was, <coughs> I was, uh, I was listening on the radio. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't need excuses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my point is um, it was raining Friday night, right? Yep. I was at the game. These guys were at the game, um, but somebody thought they're Orion tough. I saw him after the game. He had one of our bracelets on. Tim English, you didn't go to the game. You are not Orion tough. Ouch. That's Simple. not the first time that man's been called out on the show. No. I don't think he's going to be the last either. No. Nope. Not right. the way he acts. Well, my, my call out this week are two guys that are, um, of course, crazy people. You know what I mean? They're crazy people. First one I call out, of course, is Curtis Edgerton. <laughs> Curtis Edgerton, why? Let's look at the, my record here against Lakeland. Oh boy. And like, <laughs> I record again. I didn't win a game when you coached at Lakeland. It was. It gave me so much pain, so much suffering <laughs> that I had to deal with for the next next few years of my life. And then when I heard oh. the news that Curtis was coming to Oregon. Probably the best day of my life. What oh. was the record? I think I was 0-3. Oh, 
0 and 4. Nice okay, try. 0 and 4, yeah. <laughs> but that's in the past. I'm dragging green now, buddy. Yes, it is. Oh, boy. And now my next call, of course, is Jay Sharaf. Jay Sharaf. Why? <laughs> Let's look at it here with Jay. Yeah. You know, you're related to somebody that beat me in fancy football last week. Fancy football? Yes. And, of course, <laughs> you're related you related to some guy who called me a lunatic. <laughs> well, God, where could he be coming from? My goodness. So, let's see here. Well, that's uncalled for. <laughs> Must have a lot of cousins. Yeah. Then. So, let's see here. You're related to someone who um, had a theme song named that. From basically Channel 293 up in the thumb area. It would be a perfect song for him. But if you look at it, Jay, you're a big Chicago fan. I'm a Detroit guy, you know, when it comes to other sports. I'm sorry. <laughs> so basically what I'm saying is that Chicago and Detroit men don't get along. They don't! Okay, I'm done. Oh, he's going to blow it with me. Oh, God, it ain't good. Was, was that a call out? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> can you top it? I think I can oh. top it. Oh, I spent a lot of time around this guy, and I'm going to call my buddy Sammy here. See, here's my problem with Sammy. I get together with Anthony during the off season. And we're talking about shot put stuff, and I was looking up and finding some books and stuff that you could put things up, and I know Ian does a little shot put stuff too, mm -hmm. and these guys focus on the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Whenever I see this guy on Facebook talking about it, it's, oh, we got to get matching shirts. I'm, I'm going to get a hat. We need to get a boom box out there. Maybe you could have the same <laughs> success that these gentlemen have had if you take the fundamentals seriously. I'm taking serious. Instead of focusing on, on all sorts of stuff. Do you think Coach Atherton and I went out to practice today and said, you know what? We need to wear matching shirts. I know what we need to do. Let's get a boom box. That's what wins games. Do you think we'd be coaching I'm trying to make the kids happy. Hey, I didn't interrupt her in your shout out, big fella. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. My point to you is, if you want to be taken seriously, get serious. Get pumped. And, and tear that team up in the spring. Because if you're out there wearing matching hats with a big sweatshirt on playing a boombox, I'm going to come out and smack you. It's that simple. Shrot told me you wanted orange jerseys, coaching shirts. Why? Go, go, get, wanna, your, go get your coaching wanna, shirt. You want to dress there. in a shirt and tie just like yeah, that's I what he wanted to do. do. Like copy off of me after yeah. what I did for one meet. Don't you want to get a boombox to play Justin Bieber too? No! Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> well, that's what it was. He said he'd play Bieber out there. No, I wouldn't. Oh, my God. You guys are terrible. So my shout-out is you because you need to get serious. If you want to come out to practice sometime and see how we do things, we'll invite you out there. You don't have to wear a matching shirt. You don't need a boombox. It's good old-fashioned football, pal. Come out and learn something. I learned a lot. Oh, no, no. That's the end. <laughs> I, 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 let's get on with yourself. I learned a lot. All okay. right. Last guy I'm gonna call, it's a big loser. Uh, let's see. <laughs> well, he, he makes so many excuses that makes me wanna cry every time that, every time, makes me cry and happy every time they go down. Is he gonna call himself out? And football coach Tony Petrino. Tony Petrino, why? Let's look at it here. And you might, you're the first playoff coach, your first Adams coach since 1996 to miss the playoffs. You're gonna miss the playoffs. You got four losses already. I guarantee you won't get in. You're going to lose this week, Farms. You know, at five. If you look at it here, with what you make so many excuses after every single loss that bother, it bothers me. I'm going to use one game in 2008 when Lake Orion went into Rochester Adams and beat Adams 35 to 28. You know, you didn't credit Lake Orion for winning that game. You said that. It was everything was about your whole team that they didn't play well. You know what I mean? That they could have done much better running the ball. You know? Do you ever credit somebody? Do you? Tony Petrino, I as a person here, giving your team's eulogy, you know, be the first time you missed the playoffs for the first time in 15 years. All I have to say. Bye. Sammy, you kind of look like him. <laughs> Do you? No, I don't. <laughs> Are you related? No. Ooh. Uh, no, there's no relation there. I don't know. I think he'd look good in brown, though. What? <laughs> I remember. Hey, you, know, you know, he wore that to a game. Yeah, he did. He wore, he wore, he wore Adams cover colors to a Lake mm -hmm. Orion Adams game one time, and then Bill locked him in the... Uh, Yep. And this is in the varsity stadium the night after. I have a picture oh, of it. Sammy, I'll send that true. along. You can put that on next week. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I think there might be a call out coming your way. 
again. Fourth call out. Wow. Fourth. You keep wearing brown. I don't know. Forty-eight episodes and only three call outs. Come yeah. on, people. Let's go. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. Any guests out there want to just come on the show and call it Sammy? We'll take an open invites here. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, boys, good show, gentlemen. Uh, yeah. Any, any any final words? Any shout outs? I, I just have to say hi to my boy, Coach Ray. Fido. <laughs> <laughs> Tigers have to win. Tigers can bash Chicago. You know what I mean tonight with half the game back. Half game back. They Chicago can tie. off today. That's right. Shout out to the Lake Orion freshman team out there. You've got two very very great coaches here. Yeah, that boy. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, anything? I'm good. Good. Thanks, for having, hey, thanks, yeah, for, having thanks us. for having us. Open seats anytime, all right? Yeah, we'd love mm -hmm. to come back. All right, well, I think that concludes this episode of Between Terminas. Join us next week, same time, same place. We're heading to 50 very quickly, only two more weeks. Amen. Good night. <laughs>